You're watching Bread and Roses, a weekly political social magazine that's broadcast in English and Persian via New Channel TV. Hello everyone, I'm Aaron Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. In this week's program, we'll be discussing freedom of expression, internet, and the case of Raif Badawi. We'll interview Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia. On shocking news of the week, we're going to be discussing the multiple attacks by Islamists, by ISIS in Kuwait, France, Kobani, and Tunisia. The insane fatwa of the week is from Saudi Arabia and how women look at football only to stare at men's thighs. And the good news of the week is the spread of the movement to pardon those who are waiting execution as opposed to rise of execution by the Islamic regime in Iran. For the uh, question of the week, we're going to be discussing the issue of veil and racism. And we're also going to be celebrating uh, Ramadan and actually celebrating it and celebrating the fast defiers who are facing persecution as a result of not following compulsory Ramadan rules and will be drinking wine to their health and their freedom. We also have a new segment which is an urgent action alert where we'll be raising important cases for your attention. Stay with us. Freedom of expression matters. It's not a luxury, a Western value or up for sale. Sometimes, actually more often than not, it's all we have to speak truth to power. In fact, free expression is a demand of those without power vis-a-vis -vis the powers that be. It's a cornerstone of other rights and freedoms and becomes most significant and finds real meaning when it criticizes that which is taboo, forbidden and sacred. When you're looking at the internet and freedom of expression, I mean, the reality is that it has opened up a whole world for a lot of people. It's given access to information and it's also allowed people to express themselves in a way that they've never been able to before, particularly if they live under repressive regimes. And people are learning from each other, easy to communicate instantly and the access to information is amazing. At the tip of your finger you can actually have you know, access to a lot of information and that in itself has brought a level of freedom, of, uh, of freedom to um, find things out, be critical and break the framework and that's one of the things that repressive governments and institutions are not very fond of. Yeah, I mean if you look at the reality of the internet what it's done is it's brought opposition to repression in the public space in a way that wasn't able to before uh, because and in a sense you're seeing that a lot of the challenge to power and the norms that are imposed in societies being challenged right there on the internet, which is why you see so many governments trying to suppress it, censor it, and give very heavy sentences to people who've said very simple things on the internet. I agree, and also one of the um, other uh, features of this new age of freedom of uh, information and internet is it actually brought the question of uh, um, critical action from the margins to the mainstream because if uh, prior to internet uh, you had to struggle for information, uh, knowledge and it was, that was li limited to the elite of the society or people who had the energy and, you know, and, and, the, um, and the resources to be able to access that. Now that's made it open and made it actually cheap and financially it's, it's very easy to access that information um, and the majority of people have the ability to access all of this information, so actually shift it from the margins, from the elite, the mainstream and the masses. Definitely, and one of the things is, uh, alongside this explosion in this freedom of ex information and expression, you see this sort of attempt to bring regulations, to try and um, control usage, to try to deny access to a lot of websites, and that's why you see in a lot of countries like in Iran, for example, you have a huge number of cyber army, cyber police, and also the banning of websites and people having to access them via filters and through other means. Yeah, I agree. And that bit itself has brought a lot of creativity. The communities of uh, um, the communities that have been formed around internet to bypass those uh, restrictions that exist. And that's, that's a battle going on between uh, population, uh, people who want uh, to be able to express themselves and improve a lot. Uh, against the states and institute, repressive, repressive institution, and particularly 
religious groups and religious thought and religious beliefs. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we're going to be doing now is interviewing Jimmy Wales from Wikipedia. He's the founder of Wikipedia. And I think the brilliance of Wikipedia is that it is the biggest free, non-profit sort of uh, uh, information uh, center uh, that exists. And that's why, you know, it's completely standing behind free expression in a way that many sort of commercial uh, ventures like Google and Yahoo and so on are not. So you see them trying to restrict, censor, to allow governments to do what they want, whereas Wikipedia has stood firm with people like Raif Badawi and for free expression. Let's go and hear an interview now that we've done with him earlier. Stay with us. Thank you very much for joining us. I wanted to ask you about Wikipedia first mm -hmm. and the fact that it is this public, free mechanism for countless people to have access to information. Mm, yeah, I mean, today Wikipedia uh, is viewed by over 500 million people every month. Uh, so it's one of the largest uh, uh, websites and it's completely open and free and is written by ordinary people all over the world. Uh, we have editors in just about every country of the world so it's a it's a remarkable community effort. The thing about um, I, I suppose I think what's so important about what you do is the fact that you do really stand up for free information. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Google for example has allowed certain censorships to take place as a result of requests from governments but you've been really adamant against that. Why is mm. that? Well we, we've taken a very strong view that uh, access to information, particularly encyclopedic information, uh, is a fundamental human right. It's a corollary of the freedom of expression. And uh, for us to compromise with censors uh, would really undermine our whole mission. And because we're a nonprofit organization, uh, we're a charity, um, we have the ability to uh, make decisions based on what's right for Wikipedia rather than on commercial uh, judgments. So, uh, you know, so we've, we've basically uh, always taken a very strong position that we'll never cooperate with censorship. I mean, what do you think about all these attempts at restricting and limiting the access to the internet? Well, you know, the uh, all around the world we see governments uh, in various uh, ways and in various stages uh, working to restrict access to knowledge. Uh, normally the kinds of things that they're, they're restrictive of is anything that threatens their current power base. Um, but it's also other things, you know, that are um, culturally sensitive and that sort of thing. Um, well, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm always an optimist, so I think that the Internet is the greatest tool uh, that we've ever had to eliminate uh, this kind of censorship. Um, and so I think the governments who are trying to ramp up censorship of the Internet are on the wrong side of history um, and uh, will, in fact, not be successful at doing that. So people like Raif Badawi and, and those who are being imprisoned, lashed, um, even executed for their free expression over their, the internet, they are basically heroes today. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 you know, the people who are out there um, uh, expressing themselves and then being, taking great risks uh, to do so and, and sometimes being punished in quite serious ways are heroic people. Uh, they're people who really deserve our support um, and we should always think about uh, what is the best way that we can support them. Uh, one of the things in the case of Raif that uh, I've been adamant about is putting pressure on the Saudi government uh, directly by ordinary people like us who live in the UK or Europe or the US um, isn't likely to do much. They really don't care what the general public thinks in, in Europe or the US. But they do care about trade uh, and they do care about various kinds of support they get from Western governments. And those Western governments better listen to us, the people. And so for me, what we should be doing is putting enormous pressure on our own governments to say, you've got to stop doing business with the Saudis um, until they reform. And that's really, really critical. Mm. And is that something that you're be, you'll be working on um, in your campaigning for freedom of expression? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's really important. I mean, one of the one of the 
things we know from history is that we've had so much trouble um, when our governments uh, turn a blind eye to human rights abuses in other places because, you know, the old saying, well, he may be a dictator, but he's our dictator. That just blows up in your face, and it may take 10 years or 20 years, and suddenly you're, you're part of the oppression, and this isn't where we should be. We should be leading by example. Uh, we should be really put imposing sanctions, no matter how much money or oil a country has, uh, to say this behavior is not acceptable. And we'll, we'll find a way without your oil. And it would be great if you could just give a message to Raif um, mm. uh, and his family. Well, to Raif and his family. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's a great honor to even attempt to do that. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's become a great symbol for freedom. And uh, so, Raif, uh, you're a hero to me and to a lot of other people. Uh, to the family, we support you. And uh, we're going to do what we can to try and help. Mm. Great, and also if you can give a message to the Saudi government as well. And I call upon you now to release Raif immediately, uh, allow him to leave the country, uh, release all of the political prisoners that you have, and then more fundamentally and longer term, reform your policies. Uh, be aware that merely speaking your mind is not a crime and it's not something that you can punish people for. And be aware that the, there's a rising mood and a rising movement uh, worldwide to put pressure on our governments and our businesses to stop doing business with you. It's going to really hurt you. So uh, now's the time. Shocking news of the week is the report on June 26th of multiple attacks by ISIS in Kuwait, in France, in Tunisia, as well as in Kobani, where more than 200 people have been killed in these various places and hundreds wounded. And it is uh, both, uh, I suppose, to mark the fact that this is one year since their Khalifa was established. Uh, that was also during Ramadan. And also to remind everyone that this is what they do. They They're kill. soaked in blood. That's what, what it is. It's a fascist movement across you know, Europe and Middle East. Uh, and and uh, my worry is that this becomes normal. I think there needs to be a level of outrage. Uh, it's not just, you know, it's uh, out there. I think people everywhere need to be. You know, the number of people actually they've killed in Kobani. Uh, it's uh, over 100 and, uh, what is it, 146 that we know of so far. Absolutely. In, in total, they've, they've, they've actually beheaded somebody in Lyon in a gas factory. In Tunisia, they attacked a tourist. You know, innocent people just gone down uh, people I on the I think that's what they do. They actually kill indiscriminately. And what's, you know, I think what we need to do is for people to stop saying that they have justifications and r legitimate grievances because the reality is that it's a killing machine. This is how they maintain power. This is how they stay in power. And we've got many examples over many decades from the Iranian regime to how the Saudi regime works, to how ISIS works, to how Al-Qaeda works. They all work like this. This is what they do. There's no excuses, no justifications. We need to stand up to them. It is a far-right fascist movement, as you said, and we really need people to come out in full force and saying enough is enough. I agree, and I think that the, that level of outrage needs to uh, needs to come out everywhere. No if, no buts, no matter what ISIS is doing, no matter where the Islamists, I think there needs to be outrage internationally. I, I mean, unfortunately, though, there are going to be all of these left liberal sort of people, and I say that coming from but the pro left Islamic myself. But pro-Islamist supporters. Who pro will Islamic say, supporters who will say, say yeah. that they have, you know, they've had, they've faced racism or they've had terrible time or, you know, they've got, you know, no. they face discrimination. No excuses, no excuses. What, exactly, it's, no excuses, whether it's killing Shias in a mosque in Kuwait, whether it is killing a worker in Lyon, whether it is massacring tourists, it is not acceptable, full stop. And, you know, I think we really need to say this very, very clearly. The more outrage we show, the more difficult it will become for ISIS to kill indiscriminately. But we've got to all of us unite in opposition to them and to the religious right in general. The insane fatwa of the week. 
is from Saudi Arabia. And it's about how women watch football because they want to stare at the footballer's thighs. There's, there's no competition, there's no football, there's no teamwork, there's no corruption in FIFA. There's no people coming together, celebrating technique, organization. Just, it's oh, sorry, the, it's thighs. It's a sick mind of a, of a mullah. Mullah. That's what it is. And it's interesting that the woman only, that, that's only woman, not sort of, so it's... No, it well, just, the, the thing is that, first of all, it's, you know, the fact that women are seen to be, you know, just reproductive sort of organs. And so they're not allowed to look at men who are not married to them or who are, you know, f un not forbidden to them. And they're not allowed to watch football in many places, like in Iran, women can't go and watch. And now it's like, even when they do get to go, it's because, not because they're sports lovers, but because they're doing something, you know, staring at someone's thighs. It's just so debasing to women. Now, I, I mean, the interesting thing is that the women and people in Saudi Arabia, yeah. in Saudi Arabia, Actually, have been, been making so much fun. Have been making ridicule in this guy, and internationally, I think everywhere. I mean, it's, you, you'll see a woman in Iran trying to break the doors of the uh, public sort of space arenas to go and watch football in Saudi Arabia. People making ridicule in these guys. You know, tide is turning. Mm. Now it's interesting because the thigh seems to be a very, very important aspect of fatwas. You know, ISIS earlier we talked about had given a, a fatwa against women slapping their thighs and now we've got this one and you know not we're not supposed to slap our thighs we're not allowed to look at men's thighs just don't go anywhere near thighs it's dangerous now good news this week is from iran the growth of movement to pardon those condemned to be executed. Islamic regime of Iran, we, we know that not only they've been executing a lot of people in the last six months, hundreds of people have been executed, but try to increment fam incriminate families into the decision. The state uh, condemns somebody to, uh, to execution and then they said, oh, fa it's family's fault and they get them involved. Now families have started to pardon a lot of people yeah. to, in opposition to the capital punishment and system yeah, of retribution Yeah, I think this is a wonderful movement that is, you know, this movement against executions in Iran and this movement to sort of try to save as many lives as possible and pardoning is one way and it's quite an emotional sort of event that takes place because you've got people who are gathered because they're public executions mm. too which are really horrendous but you've got family members of the person being executed there and you know last minute sometimes you have the um, family of, of the aggrieved you know saying okay I'll pardon this person and they're taken the noose is taken off their neck and it's such an emotional sort of yeah. statement as well and I, and I think people are you know, because it's difficult to have organized against capital punishment in Iran, although a lot of people are doing this international campaign going on. But this is a practical thing that people have started to do and it's happening in different cities in Iran. And the jubilation and celebration following these pardons, it's amazing in different cities. So Definitely. I think it's such a welcome news. I mean, it's, and it's, well, news. it's yeah. welcome news. On the other hand, the Iranian regime has stepped up executions in Iran and they are executing countless people. So. You know, we, we do need to remember that and remember that for every person that is being reunited with their loved ones, there are hundreds more that aren't. This week's question is from Salomia, who asks whether she's being racist when she criticizes child veiling. She did this on a feminist network and was attacked. And I mean, I think a lot of people do get this where they criticize the veil, they question the veil, particularly when it comes to child veiling, which in my opinion is a form of child abuse. And, you know, the feminists will say it's women's right to choose. It's got nothing to do with choice, particularly when it comes to a child. Also, you could say it doesn't have, there's not much of a choice when it comes to adults either, but children in particular, it's a very clear-cut case, I think. And, and I, think, I think you're right. What sort of happened to her? On the question that she's raised, she's gone to park, she's seen a whole family come in, a young children again, and covered head to toe, and um, she's questioning this. And, you know, she hasn't actually gone and sort of um, intervened on there on the park. On a website of the feminists, who women's rights sort of, groups she's gone and raised this issue. It's look, this is wrong. And she's faced 
barrage of uh, insult, abuse. And I think that is something wrong here. Definitely. You know, they, if, you know women's right uh, movement need to defend the right of women. And the fact that young girls have been uh, covered from head to toe it's fundamentally wrong. Yeah. I mean, especially if we separate these things and focus on child failing here, the fact that a child from the age of six, seven, eight, uh, you know, depends on when she reaches puberty and maturity, as they call it, uh, she can actually, she has to be veiled, she, has, she can even be married off, she has to be segregated. All of these are very serious issues of child welfare and well-being. And it's really important to be able to see it within that light. So I think, you know, Salome, I think it's important to raise these issues. I think you should keep raising these issues. It's important to do that. And the truth is that questioning and defending the rights of the child has nothing to do with racism. Get over it, feminists. Start defending children and women instead. Now, um, we want to um, mark Ramadan, which is an oppressive month for a lot of people mm -hmm. in Islamic rhythm societies, where Islam is the rule, or the Islamists have a lot of power and influence. They force people not to eat. They say, look, this is the uh, Islamic rule. But in, in solidarity with people who actually are suffering in the month of Ram Ramadan, we, we did this last year and we want this year again to raise a glass of wine to and have some chocolate, chocolate. as well. Shall we do mm. some chocolate? Yes. Let's some chocolate. Reza, come on, have, have some, chocolate. some chocolate. Let's just give some chocolate to Reza Moradi, okay? And, um, and we want to sort of say in solidarity with people in Iran, in Saudi Arabia, Tunisia, um, Morocco, in, in, in Europe as well, Pakistan, that everywhere. actually are opposing Ramadan and they don't want to be subject to harsh punishments mm -hmm. Uh, we, we want to do this. Definitely. Yeah. Cheers to everybody who is not fasting and actually Cheers. breaking those rules. Definitely. And I mean, these are real issues. I mean, it's not, it's not something that we're taking very lightly. If you look at uh, just recent statistics and news, you've got in Iran, for example, just recently 164 people were arrested in two different cities for what's called Ruzekhari, which means eating during Ramadan uh, or fast denying, denying fasting rules. And you've got um, ISIS who suspended two boys from morning till night, uh, you know, tied them up and hung them, suspended them for also uh, breaking um, the Ramadan rules and, and eating when they weren't meant to. Um, and there, there's lots of examples of this. And there was a really shocking statistics I found on, on Iran last year, 207 uh, Iranians were, uh, were flogged for publicly publicly for not following Ramadan rules yeah. so these are very serious issues but you know we've got to say hats off to people in Morocco in Tunisia that are doing this in a much more public way and in way. Tunisia 300 people have actually come yeah. out uh, had publicly in a park they've, uh, they've been sort of during the month of Ramadan they've actually eaten food as, as, a, as a protest and I think it's very important oh the, sorry it's actually Algerian sorry I, so I that's okay this, no yeah. problem Algerians yeah, yeah. this is the, what, what they did is 300 people came out in the northern region of Algeria for a public lunch to protest against what they say is persecution of people who refuse to observe religious fasts and, and in fast. Tunisia they did that we've last, had that the, Tunisia that Morocco spread. exactly and I think the, the, the other issue we need to point out is Islamic regime of Iran Taliban yeah ISIS, ISIS, Saudi Arabia, they have exactly the same rule. And I think mm. this dark month of Ramadan needs to, we need to yeah. drink wine and make a, a public protest. And I think yeah, it's important definitely. to mark that. People should, be, people should be trying to eat publicly in, in, in solidarity with people who are facing persecution, for sure. And yeah. what, what happened last year when you did this? Last year, when we did this, the Iranian regime called us corrupt and immoral. And yes, we are. Here Cheers. We Now, in this section of the program, we want to raise some urgent action alerts for you. And these are cases which really need to be highlighted as much as possible. So we've decided to do that on a weekly basis. Now, we want to talk to you about a number of cases. Um, there are children's rights activists as well as uh, cartoonists 
who have been given really long-term prison sentences. And one of them is called Atena Faradani. She has been charged with 12 and a half years in prison for basically drawing a cartoon and showing her exhibitions it, um, uh, in places where political prisoners and their families have come. And she was critical of in a cartoon, critical of the uh, um, Majlis or the Iranian Islamic Parliament mm -hmm. showing them as animals to protest against the uh, their policy uh, against reproductive uh, um, women's reproductive system and that's what they've done they've actually imprisoned her and the charge they've, uh, they've, they've charged her with national security so actually any criticism of the Islamic government it's against national security and automatically you become enemy of the state and you could be sent down to long-term sentences. Yeah. And this is outrageous. And it's also, I mean, it's not just national security. There's multiple sentences, um, including, for example, being critical of, uh, you know, the supreme spiritual leader. All of these carry very uh, heavy sentences. What's interesting, too, is that she shook the hand of her lawyer and they were both charged with having illicit relations because of the handshake. And her lawyer has said, I mean, this is just part of normal social behavior, it's part of being polite, but again, you know, shaking hands between men and women is considered, uh, you know, uh, not, it's considered forbidden, really. Absolutely, and you could see, because they don't want anybody to criticize the government, they don't want anybody to question the, the oppressive, corrupt uh, Islamic regime, and the cronies that exist in the state, the protests, and, uh, protests, and they don't want anybody to criticize them, hence they, they find any excuse, even the lawyer, it's yeah, been charged. Definitely. So what we'll do is at the bottom of the screen, we will give you information about her case, her photo, as well as a place where you can go to take some action in her defense. Thank you for that. So now we've reached the end of our program, I think. I hope um, you enjoyed the yep. program this week. Uh, we are really glad to be able to actually a answer some of the questions or the comments you've uh, you made about that program. So keep do send us more questions or comment about the program we really like to um, you to be participating in shaping and forming our uh, uh, bread and roses and thank you for asking what happened to us last week i'm sorry we didn't have a program last week i wasn't feeling ve very well but we'll try not to do that again we'll try never to get sick again and uh, we want to remind you uh, that we'd love for you to support us via the Patreon website. What's great is we have a few more patrons now. So thank you for that. Your names will be at the end of the program uh, in, in the credits. But carry on telling people about us. And one of the things Reza Moradi was talking about, our director, is that we need help with distribution of our program. Yes, it's broadcast via satellite to Iran. Uh, to the region and also people who have satellite dishes, let's say immigrants in Europe, will have access to our program. But the more help we can get in both telling people what channel we're on on satellite, but also distributing our YouTube videos will be a great help. So thank you for that. Cheers. And we'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Bye. Goodbye. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to a year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discussed taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators it's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. 
You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.